the deeds of the flesh are uh, impurity, idolatry, sorcery. Sorcery is, is, is one that you go, well, I don't do that. But if you're a transgressor, guess what you're doing? That's, that's sorcery. I mean, you, you, are, you are trying to manipulate someone else by something that's not necessarily true. Defrauding is another way you could put it, too. Uh, enmities, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger. My stars. Th that's the, the point here, folks, is for us. We are to be doing the thing that nobody wants you to do. Seeking the face of God as an individual. That is because it's about the kingship of God in you. And his kingship in you, and his power in you, and the spirit in you, and you, what? Uh, we, we talked about it the other day, subjecting your mind to the law of God. That's walking by the spirit, Romans chapter 8. When you do that, you walk by the spirit. And we could go to the next verse and where it says, now, the fruit of the Spirit is. Okay? The fruit of the Spirit is. And love, joy, peace, patience, the, the, that's the fruit. One of them is something you're doing. The other one is something you're seeking. With the deeds of the flesh, you do deeds. The deeds of the flesh are evident. All right? The deeds of the flesh are evident. But the fruit of the Spirit is the way, how do we get it? By going and seeking His face, by spending time with Him, by meditation, by listening to Him, by allowing His, his life to be formed in you, by prayer, by constant prayer, by having your, your mind stayed upon God, by walking through life. I'm not saying that this is the easiest thing in the world. But we don't have the power to live the life of a Christian in our flesh. We are to strive to enter by the narrow gate. We are supposed to be living in the narrow way. Okay? And that is a way that most people don't know how we live life. The deeds of the flesh are evident. And what this is, just to, to say it, this list is a list of whenever you try to live the life of a Christian in your own power, by the flesh. Um, trying to be godly without God. Trying to go, okay, I've got this list. That's the things I'll go and do. It's a false narrative, to say the least. May I add something to that? Is what you were asking. The because um, one is my works versus the fruit of the spirit. It's not even talking about me there. I mean, it is, but it's it's the fruit of God's spirit versus the, my works, on. the works yeah. of man, the works of the flesh, and it's just two different ones. The kingship. It's God doing these things versus me doing them. And that's what you're saying, but it's interesting. It's it's the fruit of God, period. Yeah. And that's what it looks like. It's the fruit of God's spirit. Okay. Not something I can come do. It's right. It's his spirit being in me. And, and, and let me toss in here, and again, this is my weirdness. Is th thank you for bringing that up, Mrs. Davis. Um. We'll we'll hear. Things like uh, teach your children to be mighty in spirit and da, 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 all that stuff. Unfortunately, we often have with that the picture of your spirit, my spirit, the spirit in me is strengthened by the spirit of God, but my, my spirit gets strong. Now, I want you to, I want you to hear it. We have been told this, and it's come out, okay, I'll strengthen myself in my spirit. 
And this is another one of the reasons why I, this is me, and that we don't have, certainly don't have time to, to go into this teaching right now. Why I, I'll bounce off of it real quick. I do not believe that man has a spirit of his own. In other words, I don't, I don't think I have a spirit named Michael Davis living in here. I know everybody, you know, you all do, and, and, and you, that's fine. Um, but I've looked literally at every scripture, every scripture that says in the English, your spirit. And again, we don't have time to go into it. And there were a couple of them that I thought, ah, there it is. Because it only takes one to, get, to prove it. It's, it's the Bible, folks. And I studied through them very carefully and was shocked to find out that there is not any verse in the Bible that, and please hear me carefully when I say this, that necessarily proves man has a spirit. Now, by necessarily, I mean that when you read it and it, that it says, excuse me, Dr. Davis, man has a spirit or you put your name in it, or take your name out of it. It just says, man's got a spirit. The, the phrase, your spirit, in, in the Greek at least, would have been, and I understand it can be possessive. So again, not necessarily. But the way that it would be more literally translated would be not your spirit, which is the way we translate it in English, but the way that it would be literal was the spirit that is of you. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but that's a little different than your spirit. My spirit is a lot different than the spirit that is of me. Do you see the Holy Spirit indwelling me? That's the spirit that is of, of me. That's the spirit that's come from outside that's of me. There's other places that uh, I thought, wow, you know, it, it, it I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. And the more that I looked into the Greek, uh, and of course the Hebrew, too, and I'm not, not a scholar in all this, um, you know, but uh, it, it's not that difficult to look these things up. And, and this is one of the reasons why I, I think that man is bipartite. And here, I just want you to listen to the picture. That's all I'm saying. We've got a body and uh, my soul lives in the body, or I've got a soul and it lives in the body. However you want to put it. We become tripartite, complete, the, the number three being one of those complete things. We become part, three parts when we are at one, atoned, when we are at one with what? The Spirit of God. Do you understand? Now, I am a complete man. What would the Bible, what would the New Testament use instead of complete man? What word would it use? Come on. Perfect. I am a telos. I'm a telos man. Perfect. Did it mean... Wow, you know, I mean, I know most of you guys look at me and they go, it's perfect. I wish I was like that. But uh, <clears throat> no, it's, it's perfect. It doesn't mean perfection has arrived. It means I've been perfected from the outside. I've been telos. I've been made complete now. And the, the picture, and if you don't want to believe it, that's fine. I, I don't, you know, I think I would probably be in an argument with almost everybody in the face of the earth with, with this in some way or another. But I believe that uh, the picture that we see at the beginning where God ruach into man, blew into man, and he breathed into man, and man became what? A living soul. Before that, he was a soul, just like just like a dog. He should have left well enough alone if we were as good, but we weren't as good as dogs. Um, okay? 
And what happened on the day we ate of the tree of I want to be intimate with knowing, intimate with good and evil, I had the breath knocked out of me. I died. But I didn't die. No, you did. You were separated from life. The breath, the pneuma, the ruach went out of you. And by the way, again, I, I, I remind you that uh, everywhere where you see in the Old Testament or the New, uh, the word for breath is the same as the word for spirit. And somebody made a choice. One of the biggest ones is in the book of James. Um, do you not know that the body without the spirit is dead? And that's the way it's translated. But somebody made a choice. Because it could have easily been, do you not know, the body without the breath is dead? This is one of the ways, I mean, you, you check, are they breathing? No, they're kind of cold too. Now, come on, you know, they're not breathing. They are, in fact, dead. Um, and so, I, I, again, I think all of these things, these again, are, some of it is certainly my belief, but the, the things on the, the sarks versus the, the spirit are, are, are very biblical that a lot of this, the picture makes a lot of sense. The picture makes a lot of sense. And you can go back and, and explore it for yourself. You'll probably come across the same things that I did. And I went, oh, oh boy, that one got me defeated. And in shock, I found out that it didn't. Uh, that, uh, and we're going to be looking at not those verses, but some other ones uh, in the very near future that were were very confusing in their translation in regards to this. Um, I mean, Miss Davis, you have anything else on this right now? He jealously longs for the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. You know, to me, it, that fits so well into that. But I think I, another way for that to be said, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but he jealously desires for his spirit to live in us, I think is what he's saying. He's wanting his spirit to be in us, us to be bear the fruit, like we're talking about, the fruit of his spirit is all these things. And in, even in that chapter in James, it's talking about the works of the flesh. And so, and then he jealously desires for him, him to dwell in us his, by his spirit, his spirit to be reigning and ruling in us. So. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> The, the scripture that she's talking about again. Uh, how do we live the Christian life by whose power? Come on, out out loud. By whose power? By God's. Um, let him who has what praise the Lord. Breath. How about that? Interesting. He jealously desires the breath, the spirit, the power that he has put within. How do we praise the Lord by your own strength? No, by the spirit that he, what she brought up from James, by the very spirit that he's placed within you, it, this is, <clears throat> it, this is the, the, it's the way we breathe. You think about it. How do you get power into your body? I know you ingest food, but the way that you do it all day long is by one way. And if you don't, if you don't do this, you quit. It doesn't matter. You can be absolutely full of Mrs. Davis's chocolate pie. And if you stop breathing, you are still going to die. Even with that much incredible power of Mrs. Davis's chocolate pie inside you. Sorry, I'm starting to preach. I'm getting preachy here. But you, when you do, you've got to have coming into your lungs what? Oxygen. You can't breathe the water. You can't breathe CO2. You can't breathe... O2, or rather not O2, but uh, carbon monoxide, that will kill you real quick. <clears throat> you can't, it's got to be, you've got to have the oxygen, okay? It, and that's the fire. Amazing. The breath is the fire, it's the power. And receiving that power, the picture is there even in our bodies. All that have the breath of life within them, those that breathe the air, it's, He's giving us a picture of this is the way you live the Christian life. 
You breathe me in. What comes out? The power and your body moves. Your body is capable of, of all of these things, but without inspiration. Hmm, interesting. Um, without the inspiration of the O2, without the breathing and inspiration power of God's Spirit, you're not going to live. And God is calling us to that, that, that plane, that level. Quick verse on that, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become children of God. And that's the empowerment. You know, it's again breathing and receiving him, and we become like him, and we become children of God. Just the empowerment of God in our lives. Um, I'm afraid this is a, not really off of it, but I'm afraid we've allowed. Um, the kidnapping of the word power <clears throat> by and and I, I I get it I understand by the, our more somewhat charismatic uh, brethren. Now I'm I'm I am not. If you're looking for somebody who's going to be preaching against um, the scriptural truths of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit uh, against the scriptural truth of the uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit you, you've come to the wrong place I'm not I'm not ever going to be doing that uh, those things are very real unfortunately somehow we've taken those gifts and and we do we do this with everything and we do it with all everything we take those gifts and we turn it into a doctrine you know, there are some churches that go, you're not saved if you don't speak in tongues. Um, and, and of course, nobody ever defines <clears throat> saved biblically. Um, you're not going to go to heaven if you don't speak in tongues. Oh, no. Um, it, it, it just, it's one thing after another. And uh, you see the embarrassing videos of a big name in Christendom walking through the crowd uh, of his followers and literally taking the coat, the jacket that he had on and slapping people with it and them all falling down in the spirit. Um, who am I to question the strength of his <clears throat> vaudeville coat? Um, that was tacky. I don't know where they came. Look, folks, uh, when people see that on the television and on the videos and stuff like this, they're going, I don't want to have Christ. That's not an answer. Is that an answer to life? Valley of Henna, no. Uh, it, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> Cut that out, you know. Good. You know, whack, whack, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. And you touch them. I mean, we were in a church. <clears throat> we were in a church. And this couple came in. And these people, the, the oh, boy, they were, boy, they were going to be laying out. And the preacher had heard about them from somebody. And he let them come in. And he was, he, he was, I'm glad to see it. He was repentant pretty quickly. Because uh, the man would be laying hands on people and everybody, if you were going to get your hand, if he was going to put his hands on you, you were going to feel the power of the spirit and, and be slain in the spirit. Now, those of us that were actually awake and I was up playing guitar in the front and could see because somebody would be lined up, people be lined up to be prayed for and he would step in front and she would be to the side and put her hands on him and stick her foot. I mean this literally. Right behind their heels, the person's being prayed for. And this foot suddenly is at your heels. You can't move. And you stiffen up. And what do they do? Push. And so everybody is getting... I, the, the one I thought was... that This one was my favorite. Again, I was watching it. You know, is that, boom, this lady goes down. And she goes down and she's 
and the, the, the split second, she, you know, the, the usher gets her to the floor. She straightens her desk, dress, straightens her hair, and then she, her hands are up. And, Wait a second. I thought that you were knocked out by the Spirit. You know, even in the Spirit, I, I've, I've got to look good. I mean, I thought she was out. Right, it wasn't that it was up real high or anything like that. She was just... She, she, Oh. That's sorcery. That's sorcery. I've got another word for it, but I'm not going to say it. Um, uh, or, uh, uh, again, I brought this one up before. I was in a Pentecostal church, and, and I salute this man. Uh, he's probably long dead. He was older at the time. Um, and now I'm older than he was. Um And he got up and he's, he, that they were having this very large church. Boy, the building was huge and it was packed with people. And I'm, I came in a little late and I'm sitting up in the balcony and I'm watching. And all of a sudden you see this guy running up the aisle. Boom! And the preacher got up and said, okay, we're this, this running in the spirit. That's what it turned out that they thought they were doing. I mean, that, that they were doing. I'm sorry, did I? Bad. Um, they were running in the spirit. And he said, you're going to stop it now. Number one, this is not necessarily, I'm sure they were looking at Elijah and his big deal, but this is not biblical. Go, man, yeah. And he said, the second thing it is dangerous. I mean, some LOL. That's not laugh out loud. What is it? Little old lady. That's right. Some little old, some LOL steps out into the aisle when some 250-pound uh, person is running at full speed. Every bone in her body is going to be broken instantly. Pow! You know? What happened, honey? I went to church. Um, you, you better have somebody that knows how to lay hands and heal, huh? He said, you're going to stop it. And then he said, it is no wonder that people make fun of us when at our national convention, and he said, and the, they, boy, the, the, um, the podium, not podium, this, this stage, put it that way, of this church was as wide as the church building was, and it was wide. This, this huge, they, they had not a baby grand, they had a full grand piano up there. And it only took just part of it. You, you could you could you could roller skate on the top of that piano. The thing was massive. Um, and it was big. He said, "Some of the leaders of our denomination got on one end of the stage and rolled. They laid down and rolled to the other end of the stage." He said, "Is it any wonder that people are making fun of us?" I thought, "No, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm glad you recognize it." This is not spiritual life. This is not. The Holy Spirit didn't come for your entertainment or to show you off. The Holy Spirit is there to give us Zoe. The Holy Spirit is there to live the life of Yeshua for us. The Holy Spirit was promised to the body of Jesus Christ. And when the body of Jesus Christ comes into you, you also have the Spirit. That's how you know you belong to Him. You've got the Spirit, and the works and the deeds of the flesh are not the Spirit. Uh, worshiping in loud, raucous, uh, R-O-C-K-O-U-S. <laughs> yeah, go. Get the drums. Uh, raucous uh, worship is also not the Holy Spirit. When, when I have got to get the music going to get you into worship, you have not one idea what worship is. The word originally meant worth-ship. That's what it was, worth-ship. We're going to give worth-ship, that he alone is worthy. When I'm up and making sure that you are seeing what a great rock and roll drummer I am, or whether I can roll across here or, you know, speak in this many tongues and do all of this stuff, making sure that you know 
and here's my gifts before the altar, and here's much time. I'm, I'm, that is glorifying me. That's glorifying me. Our worship is to be to the, to the one that has saved us. He alone is worthy. And it is to him that I belong. And the works and the deeds of my sarks are, yes, supposed to be the, and of course it, it uses the word soma in this, but where it says the deeds of the body. If you if by by this by the spirit you're putting the the deeds of the body, um, but the the relationship you you've got to have a body to sin okay <laughs> you, you do the sarx is there to influence the the soma the body, um, but the the deeds that we do out of pride out of I want to be uh, social media um, you, you, let's go back and, and look at, at verse 19 again please I don't, again in Galatians and I'm, I'll close with looking at these things and after we've already talked about them to to say it again immorality impurity sensuality now, sensuality. That de definition. I just looked up the definition to sensuality. To this one. Uh huh. Sure. It means, and I thought it's. I've looked at it before. And I thought, wow, it's wantonness, readiness for all pleasure. It is one who acknowledges no restraints, who does whatever his caprice and unmanageable frowardness dictates. And it just reminded me of the rolling and the running and the whatever. It's just, this is what I want to do, so I'm going to do it kind yeah. of thing. Just, uh, and, and what, when, and, and, and I, you know, we're not obviously not going to go into this, but I believe the church, the, the, the church has got everything completely backwards from the way God said to do it. If, if you're going to come in a worship service, if we're going to do worth, it's in the beginning was, oh, what is that phrase? Beginning. In the beginning was what? The word. Thank you, love. In the beginning, I knew I could get it with my help, my Helper. In the beginning was the word. Now that's that's talking about our Lord, Yeshua. The word. And when you look in Psalms, there's other verses that, that indicate this pretty clearly. You're going to come together for a worship service. It's the word first. But what we've done is we've turned it into, let's do music first. Let's do something to work the crowd up and get you. I mean, they'll say it. We are trying, we, we are, uh, as we prepare for the sermon and to get our hearts. I mean, I've heard it said. They, they're admitting what they're doing. They're not saying we're manipulating you. They were preparing your hearts for the word. No, 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 no. The word lives in me. I'm coming, certainly. But my job is not to get myself worked up emotionally. My job was to be there in the first place going, I'm here to receive the word. Because that's what I'm supposed to be all the time, receiving the word. And it's the word first. And when you do the word first, the response back with music is simply, when you receive the word, let me show it to you. I'll try it well, this way. Remember us talking a while ago about, don't you know he jealously desires the spirit which he made to dwell within you? Okay? I'm going to show you he jealously desires the pneuma which dwells within you. Okay? When you receive the word. Are you ready for the receive part? Here it goes. You ready? You watching carefully? And then what? The response is singing. I'm alive. Let all who have 
breath. It's, it's life. And when I receive the word, it's back at him in praise and worship. Sensuality. Verse 20, idolatry. Sorcery. Again, we've said that's transgression. That's me manipulating somebody, and which I really. Enmities. Denominate. Uh, bother. That was a note that I put in there. Enmities. Strife. Elder boards. I, there's another one. Deacon board. I, I've been there. Strife. That's me. Jealousy. Jealousy. Well, they got attention and I didn't. Please. You know, I, 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 but I wanted to put my name on that or, you know, uh, mm, outburst of anger. Disputes. Dissensions. Denomination. <laughs> Did it again. Sorry. Factions. Oh, wait. The word denomination is there, isn't it? Envying. Drunkenness, carousing, things like this. I forewarn you. Now look at look at this. I forewarn you just as I have forewarned you. Look at it carefully. Those who practice such things will not inherit the church. Bother. Not one thing about the church in there, because that's not what he's talking about. You will not inherit the kingship of God in your life. Why? Because your flesh is king. You don't need another king. You're doing just fine. Which of course, you're not. But you understand what I mean. Again, folks, th this, this is a, an amazing list that the possible exception of drunkenness and carousing will kind of leave you un certainly will not will not leave you untouched um, because this is us trying to live the Christian life in our own flesh.